name is Makiba Felix, and I work within the resource management unit of the Department of Fisheries in St. Lucia. And today I will be presenting the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Report on behalf of the department. So my presentation, I will be giving a brief overview of St. Lucia's fisheries sector, the marine capture fishery, our marine and freshwater aquaculture, the management measures that have been implemented, key developments and future works for the department. So just a little bit about St. Lucia. St. Lucia is an island surrounded by a coastal shelf of 522 square kilometers, and we have a coastline that extends 158 kilometers. St. Lucia's fishery sector consists of commercial and recreational marine wild capture fisheries, marine and freshwater aquaculture, and post-harvest activities. We also have marine tourism activities such as sports fishing, scuba diving, and snorkeling which are all administered under the St. Lucia's Fisheries Regulations. And we have policy guidance for the sector, which is outlined in the National for Policy for the Fisheries Sector of St. Lucia. <coughs> so in terms of our fisheries sector, the fishing effort is characterized by the use of mainly open, undecked fiberglass reinforced pirogues and the traditional dugout canoes. So as you can see in the table below, this trend is evident over the years. And as of 2022, we have been able to license 385 pirogues and 13 canoes. So the canoes are still popular in small coastal communities. The overall length of the pirogues are typically between six to seven meters long with an average crew size of three people. And the majority of fishers are engaged in multi-species fishery on a single fishing trip. And given the nature of our fishing vessels, the fishers return to port at the end of every day and the trip lasts usually between three to eight hours. And most of our fishers are out on average six days a week. And lastly, our fishers have also become more experienced in the construction, deployment and utilization of mod fish aggregating devices. With many trips where large oceanic pelagics are caught have been recorded as catches associated with bad use. So for the marine capture fisheries, in 2022, the landings were estimated at 1,442.66 metric tons with an estimated X value, X vessel value of over 9 million US dollars. The offshore pelagic fishery is the more important fishery in St. Lucia in terms of landings and the main species that are caught are dolphin fish, tuna and wahoo. Our coastal fishery consists of the capture of the mussel species such as Caribbean spiny lobster and other small coastal pelagic. Pelagics, sorry. As of 2022, the department has been able to register 1,748 fishers. And most of our fishers fall within the 38 to 57 year age range. Although we have noticed at one landing site in particular, in particular, we have had a higher number of young people joining the sector. And over the years, we have noticed an increase in the number of women entering the sector. And the majority of these women are now joining as boat owners, with many of them owning multiple boats at the different landing sites. In terms of marine and freshwater aquaculture, tilapia, the giant freshwater prawn, and seamoss are the three types of species commercially grown in St. Lucia. The freshwater species production is primarily through growth in earthen ponds operated through manual inputs. However, there is budding interest in aquaponic systems. The industry is supported by the national hatchery that meets the 85 registered fishers farmers' demand. In 2022, the aquaculture sector contributed almost 77,000 US dollars to the national GDP. And as of 2022, the department has been able to register 398 seamoss farmers and 85 aquaculture farmers. And as you can see in the graph, the ratio of men to women for the aquaculture sector has not changed much over the last four years. And this is because many of the fishers uh, have been in the, the, many of the farmers have been in the sector for more than 10 years and new entrants are not too common. However, the gap in the seamoss sector is less apparent. And I just wanted to focus on the seamoss sector for a little bit because it is extremely important to our fishers, farmers, and the national GDP. So the CMOS sector has received more attention over the years with more persons joining as a result of the associated job loss due to COVID-19. 
CMOS production increased from 102,542 kilograms in 2019 to a little over 201,000 in 2022 with earnings surpassing more than two million US dollars in 2022. And CMOS is grown in the coastal bays in two main areas, Fale Bay and Savants Bay. And this photo is just an aerial view of the CMOS farms in Fale Bay. And each brown rectangle is a CMOS farm. So you could just see how heavily populated that one area is. In terms of management measures, the Fisheries Act is the main fisheries development and management legislation that the Department of Fisheries follows. And the legislation makes provisions for the conservation of the marine ecosystem. And the department has been able to establish marine reserves and fishing priority areas around the island, which have contributed to the conservation of marine ecosystems. There is also the sustainable use of our species. And as part of our conservation measures, Certain species such as lobsters and queen conch are subject to biological controls to ensure that the stock can regenerate. We also have gear restrictions, and this is applied to our nets and other fishing gear to reduce the likelihood of undersized organisms and juvenile fish being caught. There's also the regulation of access to the fishery through a license and permit system, and the department strongly promotes and encourages research and the Act provides strict guideline, guidelines that outline the application process for people who are interested in conducting research. And in recent years, the department has been able to conduct more habitat assessments as well as benefit from regional trainings held by groups such as the Dutch Caribbean Nature Alliance. And we did some shark monitoring as part um, with that group. And also the Caribbean Cetacean Society, which focuses on tracking, identifying, and cataloging the cetacean species found in the region. In terms of key developments, these are just some developments that have occurred over the last 20 years. And I just want to talk about a few of them. So the first one is the improvement in MFAD usage and management on island. The Department of Fisheries has worked closely with the fishers and fisher corps in the different communities to expose fishers to varying FAD styles and its benefits. And as part of the recently concluded CC for Fish project, the department was able to create a draft MFAD management plan, which has gained support from many fishers. And a cabinet memo has been drafted for this plan and will be submitted to cabinet for review. Number two, safety at sea measures. The fisheries extension officers host frequent training sessions with the fishers to show them the cor correct way to use their radios and also showed them navigational skills that have helped in reducing incidences of fishers who are lost at sea. St. Lucia has also adopted COAST as a parametric disaster risk financing instrument for fishers. And this insurance is triggered once the threshold is reached post natural disaster. Improvement in data collection processes. The department has improved its data collection process by increasing the number of landing sites that are sampled and also by amending the number of days that this data is collected. We have also received support from FAO to improve our data collection, and we will be piloting Calypso starting in September this year. There's also been improvement in habitat monitoring activities. And over the years, the officers have received extensive in-water training, and this has made underwater visual assessments easier for the department to conduct. The department has also received training in drone technology in using drone technology so we are able to utilize the maps that are created to calculate the dimensions of various freshwater ponds on island we have also been supporting the diver the national divers association in coral restoration activities and we have done a lot of transplanting work mainly for staghorn and elkhorn however we are looking into doing it for the brain coral and at least other stony corals because as you know in 2020 there was this big disease stony coral tissue loss disease and Selmosha was heavily impacted so we are looking at um, restoring the risks that were affected and outplanting some of the brain corals there's also been an improvement in aquaculture production and in terms of mariculture, mainly the cultivation of sea moss, the aquaculture unit has over the years introduced alternative species that have resulted in higher yields from and higher global demand from consumers. And this links to the next point in terms of market expansion. 
Ex an export development plan was developed and executed by Export and Musha in 2018 to assist the industry to meet international requirements. This plan resulted in the export of CMOS to the UK and the US and incorporated export promotions in various countries, thus positioning the product as one of the world's best. Preservation of marine life. We have banned the use of travel trammel nets island-wide and the use of gill nets within our super marine managed area is monitored and fishers are encouraged to not to use them in this area. And lastly, improvement of gender quality in the fisheries sector. Selmusha has drafted an action plan for gender equality and youth empowerment for the fisheries sector. And this was drafted by the NGEN Collaborative, the consulting team of the CRFM mainstream, mainstreaming gender initiative in November 2020. And for my last slide, in terms of the future of the fisheries sector, so the Department of Fisheries seeks to respond to the impact of natural and man-made activities on fisheries resources and the ecosystems towards the optimization of benefits from the fisheries sector. And this aligns with the national policy for the fisheries sector. And as part of that policy, the department has focused or would like to focus on nine priority areas. So I will just go through them quickly. Um, so for priority one, which is ecosystem health and integrity, the main objective is to follow the principles of an ecosystem approach to fisheries management, reduce the degradation of fish habitat, harvest fish stocks at sustainable levels, and when necessary, take a precautionary approach to fisheries development. Priority number two, managing climate and disaster risks. The objective is to drive the implementation of effective adaptation actions to strengthen the sustainability of St. Lucia's fisheries and fishery dependent businesses. One of the main ways the department hopes to achieve this is by implementing and incorporating the St. Lucia's sectoral adaptation strategy an action plan for the fishery sector, which we call the SASAP. And this is a 10 year plan from 2018 to 2022. So it's ongoing. And this plan focuses on adaptation strategies that can make major contributions, contributions to reshaping the future of climate change impacts on food production. Priority three, social and cultural development. This priority focuses or ensures that the social and cultural development considerations are clarified and used to guide the evolution and modernization of St. Lucia's fishery sector by taking into account our traditional practices. Priority four, stakeholder capacity and role in decision making. And this priority is to focus, to strengthen the stakeholder capacity for self-organization and to effectively participate in and influence fisheries sector decisions. Priority five, institutional support to strengthen the institutional capacity of the Department of Fisheries and other public sector institutions, including through collaboration with non-state actors and international agencies in support of a sustainable fisheries sector. And as we know, fisheries management is a team approach and without the effective communication between the various stakeholders, we would not be able to reach our target audience and the goals would not be achieved. So priority six, capture fish, fisheries. We're just making sure to ensure that the capture fishery resources are sustainably managed. Priority seven, to increase the aquaculture, to increase the contribution of sustainable aquaculture to economic growth, food security, and income diversification. Priority eight focuses on onshore infrastructure and ancillary services. And this is to ensure that these services are in place and maintained to support an efficient, effective, and profitable fisheries value chain. And lastly, priority area nine, market, market access and expansion. And the objective of this is to support and increase in the market value of St. Lucia's fish products and value addition opportunities through strengthened regulatory framework governing trade activities in the sector. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fields. That was very well said.